In October 2005, two backcountry ice climbers make their way to the base of the Mendel Glacier, just over a thousand feet below the summit. A piece of fabric fluttering near a mound of rubble attracts their attention. It's a corpse, partially buried in the ice and snow. They can tell it's a male body. It's lying face down, arms spread out. His head had been crushed. And when they got closer, they saw that he was even missing a leg. Over time, his face has become unrecognizable, but his head is still covered in thick blonde hair. The ice climbers wonder if this was once a hiker who met an unfortunate end. Who was this person? Then they see his knapsack and realize that it's not a knapsack, it's a parachute. On closer inspection, they see the words U.S. Army Air Corps stenciled on the fabric. U.S. Army Air Corps is an old name. It's a forerunner of the U.S. Air Force. But back then, before the attack on Pearl Harbor, it was called the U.S. Army Air Corps. When the hikers brush the snow off the body, it's confirmed. His uniform is clearly from the Second World War. World War II servicemen in California? That's strange. But we do know that top secret activities were carried out during World War II all over the American West. Was this soldier involved in a mission that has never been revealed? In 2003, on St. Paul Island, a group of American scientists discover a strange vertical cave. At the bottom of the cave, under a rock, they find what looks like a long, broken dinner roll. But in reality, it's a well-preserved ancient mammoth's tooth. What is a mammoth tooth doing in a cave on an island 300 miles off of Alaska? It's an extraordinary find. Mammoths could swim, but they couldn't swim 300 miles across the Bering Sea. So how did they end up here? Mammoths went extinct from mainland North America between 10,000 and 14,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age. Did ancient mammoths roam this island? If they did, then this tooth could change everything we know about how they went extinct. The team sends the tooth for routine carbon dating, but this is no ordinary tooth. Scientists are stunned when it turns out to be only 6,500 years old. That's an incredible 5,000 years after the mainland mammoth extinction. How could this be? How did the St. Paul mammoths survive so much longer than the other North American mammoths? And if they did, what happened to them? Why aren't they still there? Billed as the world's most unsinkable ship, in April 1912, the Titanic struck an iceberg on her maiden voyage, sinking in less than three hours with 1,500 lives lost. In 2002, a previously unreleased photo is exhibited to the world. It's a picture of an iceberg taken by a crew member of a rescue ship called the Bremen just days after the disaster. There are a few photos out there that experts think might be pictures of the iceberg that the Titanic hit but this one is special. The picture matches a famous description of this iceberg. It's like the mirror image of the Rock of Gibraltar. This is an amazing picture. Part of the iceberg is higher than the rest of it, which makes it look a lot like the Rock of Gibraltar. It also shows compelling evidence of damage on one side. If this photo is of the actual iceberg, it confirms that the size of it is at least 65 feet tall and some 400 feet long. And as with all icebergs, we know that it's far bigger underwater. A group of scientists working near the River Ob come across a dilapidated wooden hut on the beach, half buried in snow. Inside the hut, they find a ramp leading down into a large, dark tunnel, which is at least 15 feet across and seven feet high. It's absolutely stunning. The floors, walls, and ceilings of the tunnel are covered in a glittering layer of frost. 
Further investigation reveals thousands of feet of interconnected underground tunnels and over 200 small caves branching off them, all with frosted walls. They seem to go on and on forever, like some type of really cool icy labyrinth. It's really cool, but what is this place? The ground in this part of Siberia is entirely permafrost. The tunnels have been dug into the icy earth that's as solid as rock. It would have taken an extreme effort to dig such an extensive network of caves and tunnels in such hard ground. Scientists don't find any evidence of big machines or industrial mining operations in these tunnels, so it couldn't have been a mine. But running along the ceiling throughout the tunnels are old electrical wires and lights. People were clearly down here regularly, but what were they doing? In 2013, an expedition on Mount Elbrus done by members of the Russian Ministry of Defense make an unusual discovery. Deep in a glacial crevasse, exposed by melting ice, they find the scattered remains of a frozen human body. They find two arms, a hand, a leg, and what looks like a mangled torso. The Russian military examine the body and determine that they are the remains of a young man. Upon closer inspection, they realize the body is displaying the telltale signs of mummification. Natural mummification is possible at this high elevation and in these prolonged cold temperatures. It's likely that years in the snow have mummified his body. While the crushing weight and movement of the glacier may have ripped his body apart. Further inspection of the body deepens the gruesome mystery. Remnants of the clothes are little more than a coat, and the body has been decapitated. There's no evidence of climbing gear near the body. No crampons, no rope, no cold weather gear. You wouldn't last long in these kinds of conditions with only a wool coat. Could the frozen body be a hiker who lost their way? In the early 1900s, avid hikers began climbing Mount Elbrus. A temporary shelter was established to escape frigid and dangerous conditions on the mountain. The first climbers to stay there were a group of 11 people, so they called it Shelter 11. The climbing route grew so popular that by the 1930s, a famous Russian Zeppelin builder built a unique three-story luxury accommodation and scientific research center. It became one of the highest hotels in Europe, able to accommodate 100 mountaineers and scientists in heated rooms with electricity and hot showers. It would have been a luxury to stay there. Could the mysterious body have been a visitor at this famous hotel? People often went missing and got into trouble on such a daunting climb. Even today, dozens of climbers die each year on this mountain. The body looks like it's been on the mountain a long time, so it's possible they disappeared in the early days of Shelter 11. At 4,000 feet above sea level, Lake Terracol is high up in the mountains. It regularly gets down to minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter and the ground surrounding the lake is predominantly permafrost. Archaeologists working in the remote mountains come across an unusual site in the middle of the lake. Out on a small eight and a half acre island, they see the ruined remains of numerous large walls and buildings. The crumbling walls and ruins practically cover the entire island. What is this place? The complex is made up of a large rectangular external wall, 705 feet long by 531 feet wide. Inside, there are two main courtyards and the remains of a large central structure, a chain of smaller interconnected walled yards and buildings surround the perimeter. The complex on the island is about the size of two football fields. I mean, that is huge. The exterior wall, or curtain wall, is also really thick, about 40 feet at its widest, and also about 30 to 40 feet high. All the walls and buildings are made of clay bricks, 
so the site has become known as Pour Bajin, or the clay house. Based on the types of material and construction methods used, archaeologists believe the site must be at least a thousand years old. It would have taken a lot of time and energy to build this enormous complex, especially in such a cold and remote location. In 2011, a group of archaeologists from Linnaeus University and the local Kalmar County Museum are conducting a full-scale excavation in order to find out what may lie below the soil. Shortly after their work begins, they discover a human tooth and then a jawbone. Then suddenly, two skeletal feet sticking up out of the soil makes them realize that this is not going to be your average dig. The initial excavation yields 26 skeletons, almost all intact, their bones exposed to the light for the first time in over a thousand years. 26 bodies. That's astonishing, especially considering the people lived here. So it's not a place where they would have buried their dead. So what could have happened to them? Archaeologists working the site discover more bodies lying in strange positions on top of each other. They find one skeleton of an adolescent lying with his feet across the midsection of another grown man. In another area, the body of an elderly man is found lying across the central hearth of a house. His pelvis is charred, but the rest of his body has been spared the flames. Because only part of his skeleton is burnt, it means that his soft tissue was present and intact when he fell across the fire. And he would have either been dead or unconscious when he did so. Archaeologists examine the skeletons, looking for any signs of what might have happened to them. Some of their heads have been smashed with a blunt object, while others show signs of sharp force trauma to their heads, to their shoulders, and to their hips. What the archaeologists notice is that these wounds have all been efficiently distributed. That means that the attackers have targeted the same place on their body and done so to full effect. In 2015, researchers make a grim discovery at a place known as Zeleni Yar. They uncover an unusual looking burial site in the frozen ground. Inside, they find a body wrapped in what appears to be tree bark. To get some answers, they transport the body to a lab for testing. When researchers delicately cut open the shroud, they discover a hidden layer of reindeer fur. Below the fur, they make another strange discovery. Carefully placed upon the body, covering the face, chest, abdomen, and groin, are four large, flat pieces of copper. This burial custom has never been found in graves in Siberia. Removing the copper pieces from the face, they realize it's not a teenager, but the eerie mummified body of a young boy. It's astonishing to look into the perfectly preserved face of one that was so young. The boy died when he was only seven years old, around the year 1250, during the medieval period. But as researchers continue their excavation, they make an astounding discovery. They find 88 separate hidden graves in the frozen ground, all buried between the 8th and 13th centuries. It's actually pretty amazing. This boy's grave was part of a whole necropolis. But without any distinctive artifacts, we still don't know who these people were. Archaeologists in Western Finland uncover the remains of nearly 100 people. Their bones are revealed to be centuries old and predate the Vikings in this area. Could they be evidence of an ancient cemetery? Other early Iron Age cemetery sites in Finland show that at the time, bodies were primarily cremated. So finding the bones of this many bodies from that period is highly unusual. The bones are scattered and mixed together and don't appear to be laid out in an ordered way like you'd expect if this was a cemetery. 
When bones are found scattered like this at a site, sometimes it's determined to be the remains of a battle. The bodies lie where the soldiers fall, and over time, they get mixed together. But if this was the site of a battle, and these were fallen heroes, then where are all the weapons? I mean, there's no armor, there are no buckles. There are very few artifacts here other than bones. In some ancient Nordic cultures, boggy and marshy areas were considered scary and mystical places. Bogs were used as places to sacrifice people to appease the gods, or to bury someone as a form of demeaning punishment. The chemicals from the peat moss and the lack of oxygen in most bogs prevent bacterial decay in organic matter and preserve the bodies perfectly. It's incredible. We can see every minute detail of these people's faces and every injury revealing how they died, whether it's by slit throat or by a blow to the head from behind. But at this site, only the bones remain. So perhaps Levan Luta was a place where people in the community were buried or sacrificed. The population in the area at that time wouldn't have been that large. So 98 would have been a considerable number of people to be sacrificed or punished for wrongdoing, even over a period of many years. 